What wondrous power did it take? Who made the never-ending sea? Who formed the grass, the vine, the tree? Who made the cattle on the hills and creeping things in rocks and rills? Who holds all things with who owns all houses, fields, and lands? Who keeps our souls each passing hour? No man has this almighty power. It is the Lord, and He alone. Man has no glory of His own. We have no goodness. We can claim so, let us publish his great name. He takes a sinner, vain and wild, and makes him as a little child, subdues his will, and guides his feet, and draws him to the mercy seat. Let all create in the Lord let us rejoice, let all his words praise and confess the glory of his righteousness. All right, boys, the question was who? What's the answer? God. God, that's right. He is the one who sends the wind and sun and rain and who stretched out the skies like a curtain. Yes, sir? Every time I hear that, I think of the, I don't remember which psalm it is, but he, he is the one that made us and not ourselves. That's right. That's, I don't remember. That's, a, that's Psalm 100. Psalm 100. We could probably say that together. Bless the Lord. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not what he said. It's Psalm 103. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. All right, 177. 177. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest. Father's world, 
shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be one. All right. Amen. Let's sing. Uh, this is the day the Lord hath made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. There are some days that uh, songs like that, the song we just sang, who, uh, This is My Father's World, and Who Flung the Stars Out to Space. Those are just, there are some days that are just easy to sing those songs. Um, for me, today is one of those days. It's a glorious day. It really is. A, make sure we stop and notice. This is a gloriously beautiful day. It feels beautiful. It feels it feels comfortable, right? Um, the colors are wonderful. I was out in the Wolf River trails this morning, and just, there's a little flash of color every now and then, but mostly just green and promising, and and uh, just cool. It just felt wonderful. Um, and yet, it, so it was easy. I, I, wanted to talk about it. I wanted to talk about praise and thanksgiving and God's glory and His beauty. And yet, there's a part of me, um, there was a part of me that was mourning uh, of that. I was thinking about Daniel. Um, Daniel, there are parts of this song we just sang. Uh, the, uh, the morning light and the lily white that don't have a lot of meaning to you right now, right? Because we, we just say, even though we are in this Father, our Father's world, that the uh, the wrong oftentimes seems so strong. So there's there's some wrong things in this earth, right? Um, there's some things that are that are broken that don't work the way that they should. May I add that uh, as true as it is that some parts are uh, like under Greek to me right now, it does tell me what shall be. That's exactly right, and that's where I'm heading with this, right? So. In, in our Father's world right now, there's a lot of attention on tomorrow from about noon to three, right? That time period where there's going to be an eclipse. You know what an eclipse is, right? What happens in an eclipse is that the sun gets blocked. And I don't know all the, the movements, how this happens, but the sun gets blocked by the moon for a certain period of time. So in the middle of the day, it's going to be dark. Isn't that something? And so... Uh, the Son, the Bible, likens the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to the natural Son. And so there are times in our lives that it can be like an eclipse, right? Where we just don't see the Son as we should. And so part of what we're doing today is we are lifting up our voice and asking the Lord to help us not have an eclipse of seeing the Son of God. Now here's the glorious thing. Here's the wonderful thing. It doesn't have to be a glorious day to see the Son of God and to praise Him. You don't even have to have sight. So yes, the lily white doesn't mean a lot to Daniel right now, but what does mean a lot to him is that um, God is the ruler yet. The battle is not done, but Jesus who died shall be satisfied in earth and heaven be one. So that all things will be made right and whole. So we do look to the future as part of our, part of our faith walk is to acknowledge the glory of God and His goodness to us and to see the sun. And part of it is to look to the future when all things will be made whole and right. And so that's what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're praying, we're praising, and we're beseeching the Lord to remove the moon, as it were, to remove the darkness that might cause us to not see the Son of God as He is. Then, tomorrow, uh, there was a minister I heard on the, on the internet who said that tomorrow is a chance to pray for our nation and the church, yeah. and to pray for the, the and to remind there. people about the darkness during the time of Jesus on the cross, yeah. and a time to lift up our hearts to. 
for this nation and for each other and everything. That was the great that was the great eclipse, wasn't it? That was the greatest eclipse ever. Was when the the, the sun was darkened for three hours um, as Jesus was on the cross suffering for our sins. But then the light shone forth. He came forth from not just the cross, but the, the grave. The stone was rolled away, and the word to the ladies was, "Why are you mourning? What what are you seeking? Jesus is not here, but he is he is risen." So may the Lord bless us to see Jesus Christ risen, reigning, loving, keeping, shepherding, and at the right hand of the throne of God, waiting, expecting until all enemies are his footstool and we are raised to be with him. Let's go to the word of prayer. We'll ask a couple of brothers to pray and then we'll sing some more. Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, desire this morning to worship you as you are the only one worthy of worship. Lord, we're thankful for uh, your steadfastness. You are a, um, a vast God. If we think about the universe, some of the things that have been mentioned this morning, um, this is uh, your world, Lord, that's been created uh, by you in, in the way that you uh, wanted it created, Lord. And uh, what a beautiful um, place it is. And we only see it um, after it's been cursed by sin, after it is in a fallen state. So we do see things that are not good. We see thorns and um, we see uh, the, the winter when, when things die, Lord. But we also see the spring when, when there's new life. And we see the colors and the beauty and, and all that is in it, Lord. We see the rain that, that uh, falls and, and helps to replenish the earth and, and make it bright again. We see so many things reflected uh, that reflect your glory um, in, in this world that you have created, Lord. And what an amazing thing it is. What an amazing creator you are. We're thankful, uh, God, that we um, look to you as the creator. We bow before you as the creator. <coughs> Lord, we are thankful that you are our father, um, a perfect uh, father figure for us, Lord. There are um, uh, relationships and, and uh, families in this world are fallen and there's all kinds of difficult situations, bad situations, Lord. There are many uh, fathers out there that um, maybe even try to do it right but do it poorly. Maybe there's some that don't even try to do it right and make a, a, a mess of things. Um, Lord, but we can look to you as our father, our perfect father who cares for us and cares for us well and knows all about us. And we're thankful that we are in such great hands, such caring hands, such capable hands, such strong hands, Lord. Um, so we are thankful to call you Father this morning. Lord, we do confess our sins before you. Um, just thinking about you as our creator and as you, you as our Father, we should constantly be falling um, on our faces before you and uh, worshiping you and being thankful to you. Uh, but um, the reality of our sin nature is such that, Lord, we struggle. Um, to do what is right. So, Lord, we, we confess our sins before you this morning and, and say, Lord, um, remember us in mercy and uh, remember us for, Je <coughs> for Jesus' sake. And, Lord, we pray this morning that we can um, uh, cast aside the, the things, the weights that beset us, and that we can draw nigh to you, that we can give you the worship that you deserve, Lord, and that we can... Um, can grow in you. Lord, we do desire growth. We desire spiritual growth where we draw closer to you as we know more about you and as our relationship with you grows. Lord, I pray that you would bless us to be faithful to um, put in the work on, on the relationship. Help us to put in the reading of the word and the, the uh, memorization and study of the word and meditating of the word and the prayer um, and the, um, keeping ourselves busy in the kingdom. Uh, among the body, Lord, looking out for one another. All the different things that you have modeled and that you have told us in the scriptures, Lord, we pray that you bless us to desire to be faithful uh, to those ends. Lord, I do pray for our time this morning. Um, we are thankful that you have set um, up the church um, and you uh, feed us on a regular basis. You give us the things that we need and you do that through um, regular old uh, sinful men that are called to a higher calling, Lord. So we pray this morning as we uh, pray, as we sing, um, as we hear the word preached, that uh, 
your name would be magnified and that we would be fed um, that wonderful spiritual food, Lord, that we need and that we would be able to give you glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for this gorgeous day. Lord, thank you so much for the beauty of it. Lord, we are reminded that you are our sovereign, awesome creator. You spoke this world into existence. Lord, um, that... God, we're just reminded when we see creation, Lord, that, that you are alive and well that you were on your throne. Lord, we're also reminded when we see the, the blooms on the trees and the plants, we're reminded of new life, reminded of the resurrection. And Lord, that's why we come and gather Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, because the tomb is empty. Christ is risen from the dead. Lord, thank you so much that... There is truly victory in Jesus Christ. So Lord, bless us as we worship today. Bless us to worship with, with uh, joy. Uh, bless us to worship in victory through Christ. Lord, I pray that you would bless us as we sing, to sing with, uh, with sincerity of heart, with worshipful hearts, Lord. Bless us as we would listen to the word preached to us. God, I pray that you know exactly what we need. If we need reproof, rebuke, exhortation, um, encouragement, Lord, I pray that you would bless us to receive your word, that your, your word would be effectual in our lives and our hearts, God. I pray that you would um, bless us to apply your word to our lives. And Lord, I pray that we would all leave this place looking a little more like Jesus, that we would be more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Lord, for um, stirring our hearts a spirit of worship this morning, the praise, and I pray that that would continue and increase and multiply as we that we would encourage and exhort one another now in psalm and hymn and spiritual song um, that uh, we would be that the peace of God would rule in our hearts we remember we, we have been called together in one body and we might be thankful um, and father I pray that we might grow today in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and may your name be exalted and father I pray that you would um, you would pull away whatever seeks to eclipse our view of Jesus this morning. In his name we pray and say amen. All right, get your Bibles out and turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 wants to say, uh, wants to just to uh, speak verse 8 together <coughs> aloud. Romans 5 verse 8. Give you a minute to turn there. <coughs> Romans 5, verse 8. Alright. Romans 5, 8. Let's say it together. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and the the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. He has done great things, He has done great things, He has done great things. 
37. Number 37, and then Jefferson Field come and lead a few of you back. 37. No me so me. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing over his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangel in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him. our blessed Redeemer, heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring, Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever, crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king, Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Right, can we sing number 30? This prayer came to my hearing um, your prayers a few minutes ago. And I just just rejoiced as I uh, flipped to it a minute ago. Um, I think sometimes whenever we just think about praising the Lord like in that last song, I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you're looking at something that you know is glorious, but you're just not able to appreciate it. And sometimes just one thought or one bit of wisdom can just open it up and it becomes a glorious thing, a glorious whatever it is a poem or something. It's just it's just a poem until something clicks and all of a sudden it becomes transcendent and it changes you. And so that's what this song's praying for. It's Lord we know we need you because we know you're worthy of praise. So we're we're here to praise you because you're worthy of praise. But please, please help us. Please open up. Show us. Show us. Help us to to uh, to do it. So this this is my prayer this morning. Yeah. Thy great name, O Lord, we come to worship at Thy feet. Oh, for Thy Holy Spirit down on all that now 
number 31. And then 346. Thank you. Number 31. Heart to doves and hearts and voices. Yeah. 
sing number three in the booklet, and then we'll sing 357. Can you lose your phone? Yep. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Lord, we, we mean it when we say um, that we acknowledge that Jesus is uh, trustworthy, and yet at the same time, Lord, we, we beg uh, for your spirit that we would trust him even more. And so, Lord, now as we sing um, this song about uh, your spirit coming, Lord, we, we pray like David prayed so many times in the Psalms, Lord, look at my heart. Um, in, in all honesty, Lord, I want so badly to serve you, Lord. See me and help me. Um, help us this morning to lift up our voices. Thank you for this body. Thank you for these brothers and sisters, Lord. Would you um, weave us together in fellowship as we worship you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As pants the heart for cooling streams.
flag on the ship. You know it's there, you know, like when the wind starts blowing, you know the flag jumps out. That's kind of like when the spirit starts blowing, but Zach sticks his hand out, and I saw that in the corner of my eye on the last. So <laughs> it's good to sing with you. Okay, we had we had one other song I've already called out. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Sola, so me do. So let our lips and lives express the holy gospel we profess. So that our work and virtue shine.
So we began this service this morning thinking about the, uh, the eclipse that is happening tomorrow and all the excitement and uh, things surrounding that. And if we liken it, it's a pretty obvious, obvious connection there. We likened it to the, uh, the brightness of the glory of God that is displayed where? In the face of Jesus Christ. Um, and then the many things of life that threatened to hide his face from us. And so we're in an exercise, we're in a war, we're in warfare right now to to see him. And and let me just tell you that the song we just sang, um, that is the solution to whatever the question is. Um, It's the cross of Jesus Christ. At the cross of Christ, Paul says, the world is crucified to me and I unto the world. It's the cross of Christ where we find that our, by His stripes we have been healed. It's the cross of Christ that we find that our sins have been forgiven and that we are justified from all things. He was cursed for us that the curse might be removed from us. So the cross is the answer. And yet, um, you know your own heart or you, you know what you know of your own heart. And you know if the smile of his face is hidden from you because of resentment or doubts or fears or temptation or guilt or a thousand other things. Let me just tell you again, the cross is the answer. So we need desperately to see the Lord Jesus Christ. That song talks about the threat of the cross being hidden from us. And so um, I'm going to, let's do It Is Well With My Soul. As our last hymn, Brother Zach's going to preach for us today. Let's be praying for him. Let's stand and sing. Um, It is well with my soul. And then he will preach for us. You'll be praying for him. Let's stand and sing 174. 174.
know your heart can move that last song, like the whole song service. Can you imagine what it'd be like in glory? When multiplied millions, maybe billions of the saints have been redeemed with the blood of Christ. But we pray to him. The Lord made the church kind of a little heaven on earth when it's like it should be. Kind of a precursor, a uh, small precursor, the uh, earnings of our inheritance, what it'd be like. But I'm looking forward to the time we can pull out all the stops and not have a simple nature and glorify God. That ought to keep us going to that prospect and we ought to enjoy it as much as we can now. And thank God the Holy Spirit does move us to sing as we did today, uh, making melody in our heart to the Lord. This is kind of a personal sermon today. I'm preaching to myself, but you can listen if you want to. I'm going to preach to myself, but you get it too if you like. I'm serious about this. I want to preach on a subject. I'm going to call it biblical help. Biblical helps for spiritual growth. You know, what, how the sermon came about, Wendy was our prayer and fasting day. I always enjoy the prayer and fasting day. And so I pray for a lot of things and a lot of people, but I also pray for myself. And you, ought, you need to pray for yourself also. So I asked the Lord to speak to me and show me about some ways I could draw closer to him and become a better Christian. And he gave me quite a few scriptures, so that's the ones I want to share today. So none of these I'll be able to do justice to, because each one of them could take a whole sermon, but I want to hit the highlights. And my prayer is that you'll be helped by this, and some, you, everybody gets something, take something home. So my text is over in 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. We need to be growing in grace. Let me ask you a question. Are you growing in grace? Are you, are you doing better, you think, in your growth than you were maybe a few months ago or maybe a year ago? We all don't want to grow. And we, all, and we can grow. And we need to, that ought to encourage us. We can grow. And that's a command of God. That's the imperative mood. Here to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that knowledge, there's not just a head knowledge, it's, a, it's an experimental knowledge. To be close to the Lord. He's a person. We, we fellowship with Him. So I want you to grow. And I want to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And every age group here is affected. I'm going to read to you those. we got some old folks here probably. I'm one of them, I reckon. So I want to encourage all the old people here. Sometimes old folks think they're over the hill and they start. They think they can coast, but don't ever coast. What you need to do is head for the finish line and sprint out at the end. I used to really enjoy going to the marathon before they had that Boston thing that happened when they had to have more security. And when they had the marathon here in Memphis, I would always get near the goal. And I was always thrilled to see how people came around that corner. Uh, they were just exhausted. Some of them just stumbling and just worn plumb out. When they saw that go, something happened. They, crossed the, they come around that corner, their faces would brighten up, and they had a hope. And my friends, when we get near the goal, that's what we ought to be doing. You old folks getting near the goal. You ought to get excited and sprint out to the end. Let me read to you uh, in Psalm 92 about old people, old folks. And you'll all be old someday if you live that long. Uh, I'm going to read here, first of all, in uh, Psalm 92, and read verse 12 through 14. Psalm 92, verses 12 through all. Everybody can listen, old folks especially. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Isn't that wonderful? So they're bringing fruit in old age. And one time I got a hold of a Bible dictionary. Uh, I was over at sister's house, Sister Daphne Watkins. And so she had a study Bible. And so while we were talking, I kind of went through her study Bible. And I came across this text. And it had a wonderful uh, description of that date palm tree. This is a date palm tree talking about here. And you ought to do some studying. That date palm tree is a great thing. It's a... It's a, it had a longevity, and it had gigantic uh, clusters of, of dates. And the older the tree gets, the sweeter they get. That's what he's talking about. So old people ought to be bringing forth fruits of old age. But also young people need to be bringing fruit right now. Don't mess around. You need to be bringing forth some fruit too. So I'm going to read you something about young men. This applies to all young folks, not just to the men. So let me read, go to one verse over here in Second John. I mean, Second First John, chapter two. In verse 14, so all the young folks, don't wait till you get older to begin to really sprint out and serve God with all your might. Uh, 
over in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I've written it to you fathers because ye have known him that from the beginning. I've written to you young men. Y'all listen to me, young men and young women. All you, I've written to you young men because you're strong. The word of God abides in you. You've overcome the wicked one. That ought to put your appetite. You're strong. Why? The word of God abides in you. You're overcoming the wicked one. That ought to encourage us to all grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, let me give you some text that I'm preaching to myself. And about, I want to give a, what I'm going to call a caveat first. I want you to put forth all your might in serving God. But I've got a caveat to give you also. Now, you can't hide behind the sovereignty of God. You can't blame God if you're not doing what's right. But I will also say this. You can't do nothing without God. You may, the longer you live, the more you realize that you can't do anything without God. When he said in John 15, 5, that may you can do nothing. He meant that. So you've got to depend on God, totally depend on God, but you've got to work with all your might. So I don't know there's a balance in there. I can't get that balance unless the Holy Ghost goes make it real to you. We're working, now I'm going to give you two verses that help us on this balance. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. This is the balance. Now, you're working as hard as you can work, but you gave got all the glory. I mean, all the glory. You can't do anything. You can't lift a finger without God. One time on a, on a list server I was on, a brother got real mad at me. It was just crazy. I thought I made the soundest statement I had ever made. I said, you know, my uh, practical theology is what old brother M.H. Oakley said one time. He had a good old brother from Little Rock, Arkansas. I go see him pretty often. And brother Oakley said one day, he said, Brother Guess, I'm going to tell you my practical theology. I said, what is it, Brother Oakley? He said, everything I do good, God gets 100% of the credit for it. Everything I do bad, I take 100% of the blame. And that's sound theology. So I put that on that list server, and the guy got mad at me. The saddest thing I've ever made, he said, you're saying you're a robot. You're giving God all the glory. My friend, that guy doesn't realize how weak he is, and you don't realize how weak you are either. You can do nothing without God. But on the other hand, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which thinks us. You've got to work with all your might, but you've got to give God every bit of the glory. Not 99%, all the glory, okay? Let's read these two verses now. I'm going to give you two verses. It's kind of this caveat that will show you, that balance this thing out before I get down to what I really want to talk about, about the things God showed me, about how I hope I can draw closer to God, and I hope you can too. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. The Apostle Paul speaking here. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. We could all say that. We could all say amen to that. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, the grace of God, which was with me. Isn't that a great balance? Only the Holy Ghost could write something like that. I labor more. I work harder than all of them. He wasn't bragging a bit. He just stating facts. But then he gave the source of that energy he had, the source of your energy. If you have the energy to serve God, he gets all the glory. All right. Now, let's go to another one over in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. This also is this balance. Philippians 12, 2, 12 and 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Now get this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's pretty important. You know, we can just read that real fast. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to fear God. It's serious business serving God. We live in a very casual age. We live in a secular age, an irreligious age. The whole world just about is there. The United States is getting increasingly secular. It's, it's terrible. People don't fear God. My friend, you need to fear. It's, it's serious business serving God. It's life and death serving God. I, I hope the Holy Ghost will make that real to me and you both. It's life. It's not, you're not just casually serving God. You can't casually serve God. There's no such thing as a true Christian being a casual Christian. That, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. So he said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to stand in awe of God. I want to learn how to stand in awe of God, don't you? The Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth stand in awe before him, the old prophet said. I want to do that more. Let's ask God today. God, give me a sense of your awe that I can reverence you and stand in awe of you. Every day we all wake up in the morning and say, God, let me stand in awe of you today, God. Who, who are you? You're the one that somebody in their prayer spoke this world's existence. He spoke it of his none. He commanded and it stood fast. That's the God we serve. But let me keep reading here. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with, with fear and trembling, 
for God was working in you with the will and to do of his good pleasure. If you got a will to serve God, you ought to say hallelujah. Because if you're not born again, you'll have a will to serve God. Most of the world, much of the world, had no will to serve God. They would be bored of what you're doing here today. Most of the message would be bored of doing what you're here today. But not me. I want to serve God. And if you do, you ought to have, Lord, thank you for giving me that will. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Psalm 110, verse 3. If you're, not that, he makes us willing. Isn't that wonderful? He works us both the will to do his good pleasure. So therefore, let us thank God for that. Work our own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, let's go to the text that God gave me this week. And the, I'm going to read, first of all, Romans chapter 12. Those of them are very familiar. They're familiar to me, but I got a fresh look at them. So what's my topic again? Biblical helps to draw near to God. And I said, God, give me some of those. And I, I, I want to work on these the next few weeks. Hard than I ever have before. I want to grow. I want to be strong when I'm, when I'm, right before I, get, before I die. I think it's Psalm 39. The last verse says something like this. Oh, Lord, let me to recover my strength before I go hence and be no more. You know when you're going to die. I'm not scaring you like the Armenians do, but you better watch it. You're going to go to hell. I ain't going to tell you like that. But I do want to be close to God when I get close to death. Don't you? I want to be, and we don't know when that time may come. So let's draw the light of God. Okay, Romans chapter 12. Great, great stuff. This whole sermon could be on this, but I can't do it. So pray for me to have the right balance to just say enough and may the Holy Spirit make it real is what I hope will happen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed that renew your mind, you may prove with that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now let's, look, let's break that down a little bit. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. I love that. Now let me tell you where this is in Romans. In Romans, this is a general rule. In Romans, the first 11 chapters are primarily doctrinal. Primarily doctrinal. The foundation, our salvation. Then he starts in chapter 12, verse 1, and the rest of Romans basically is practical. We draw practical strength from the doctrinal foundation. And I'll read to you. Now, Paul got excited about the doctrine. So let me tell you the context. Really. Let's go to Romans 11 now. To read a few verses. Just a few verses. Paul's exciting. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, look. Here, Paul is not saying, you better be careful or you'll go to hell. He's not saying that. He's not even really saying, if you don't behave yourself, God will chastise you. That is true. And someplace he said, he said that. Someplace he did say, if you don't behave yourself, then you can become a castaway and you're going to be in bad shape. But he's not saying that here. He's doing something on a higher ground than that. I beseech you, and he's not commanding them. He's not getting, he's not getting tough with them. He's begging them. I hope that you hear begging in my voice this day. Every one of you. I beseech you by what? The mercies of God. That's what all made motivate us. God's amazing mercies. He got 11 chapters of the mercies of God in Romans 1 through 11. Then he comes to the end of that, and look how excited he gets over in Romans chapter 11. Let me read those. I'll read verse 33 through 36. Some of the most wonderful, classic scripture in the whole Bible. Romans 11, 33 through 36. This is Paul beseeching them on the basis of this. Romans 11, 33, 36. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath first been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and shall be recompensed unto him again. In this magnificent verse. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things to be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul closes out that uh, section with a great climax of praise to Almighty God. Then he said, I beseech you, brethren, the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Now, I'll just, I'll just say what I can about this. I can't take too long on this verse. I wish I could. We pre present our body. This, this is a, you're, you're doing that today, but he's not talking about just when you come into church. When he says body, he means, he means the whole person. Mind, soul, and spirit. Everything. So, my, you, you, listen, you don't belong to yourself. Nobody really does. No human being belongs to himself. Everybody owes God allegiance as their creator. 
But we Christians, the true Christians, we owe God double allegiance, don't we? Not only do we owe him allegiance as a creator, we owe him religion as our redeemer. So we don't, you don't belong to yourself. So you, you think you do, and I think I do. That's what's wrong with this abortion stuff. I want to have a right to your own body. Autonomy, personal autonomy. Ungodly, my friend, ungodly. That's not the way to live. I should say, I'm going to do what I want to do. My body's mine. No, it's not your own. You wouldn't have one if God didn't give it to you. It said over in the Corinthian letter, my friend, you're not your own. You're bought the price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies and your spirits which belong to God. Your time belongs to God. The mind gave you belongs to God. Your body belongs to God. Your energy belongs to God. Your opportunities belong to God. Your education, God gave you that, my friend. You belong to God. And we get in trouble when we try to become autonomous. Say, well, I belong to myself. I'm going to do what I want to do. Please don't do that. Young people, you live in a world that's saturated that ungodly doctrine. It's getting worse and worse all the time. Don't do that. Be submissive to Almighty God. Present is a time, it's, it's like in the Old Testament, they gave God sacrifices. So you're presenting yourself every day to God. Now look, don't get by, don't try to get by. You can't get by, but only try to get by with halfway effort. Back in the Old Testament, when they had their offerings, they brought the animals there, God would not accept an animal that had a part lacking, like a three-legged sheep, or one that had a bunch of swords on it. God would accept that. They tried to get by that sometimes. He made it, Malachi said, you ain't getting by that. God may accept it. And my friend, God is not going to accept your halfway sacrifice. You make a, I don't want to get tough with you now, but I'm going to tell you plainly, some of you may congratulate yourself. God, you, you got a great Christian here. I came to church this morning. I come every now and then. You ought, you ought to just thank God had a guy like me. God don't operate that way. You're not going to do a big favor by coming to the house of God. He's doing you a favor by wanting to give, give, give you a desire to come to the house of God and worship him. Don't get by with halfway. We do that sometimes. We give God a nod of the hat. Lord, here we are on Sunday now. You're a good old boy, but I'm living the way I want to live the rest of this week. My friend, don't do that. Don't do that. Present your body a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. You're set apart as a child of God, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's only reasonable, my friend, to give God all we've got, considering what he's done for us. And then here's what really got me on this. Here's what I want to do. I want to change. If you grow, you're changing, Right? When you're growing, you're changing. When, when I, look, I, press a little, I can't believe these kids are growing up my grandkids. Every time they tell me how old they are, I think they're lying to me. They're growing up so fast. I'm not kidding you. So you ain't, you're just joking about that. My friend, they're, they're changing. They're growing. We can change and grow till we die, spiritually speaking. The outward man is perishing, but the inward man is renewed day by day. So we present our... Now, here's the word he got me. I love this. Don't be conformed to this world. And that word, world's age. Don't be conformed to this age. The worldview ought to be a godly worldview. We have many ungodly worldviews. And we're, we're, we're influenced by that. I can't preach a sermon on that. I like to do that sometime. I can done some of that. Worldview, my friend, don't be conformed to this age. Don't let this age dictate to you how we ought to think. You know what marriage is? Uh, 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 it's one man, one woman for a lifetime. I said man. You hear what I said? I said woman. You hear what I said? For a lifetime. We live in an idiotic, ungodly culture. Where you got to even watch your pronoun talking to people. Or you may get fired. Brother, we can't be bound to such ungodly stupidity and foolishness. Listen, there's some things that are right and some things that are wrong. That's just the way it goes. And the Bible's always right and we're almost always wrong. So, don't be conformed to this world. But what, oh, this is the word that really got me on this. Oh, I love it. Be transformed. The renew of your mind. I want to be transformed. You know what that word is in the Greek? It's metamorpho. It's metamorphosis. And you, I know what you're thinking about. I always think about it. Everybody does. Uh, caterpillar becoming a butterfly. What could be uglier than an old caterpillar? <laughs> Even though I think Jerry said they ate them over in China, Jerry, right? Anyway, what could be uglier than an old caterpillar? But what could be pretty than a butterfly? My friend, I want you to become a butterfly. You can become a butterfly. You are becoming a butterfly if you're one of God's children. One of the prayers today was, God conform us to the image of your son. And he, we be, that he predestinated to be conformed to your son. And that's happening even right now. You might realize it. Some of the troubles you have, God brings those your way to get your mind off this world and win you away from this world. If you just had a soft life and no trouble, you'd go down the drain. I would too. You're so carnal and you're a lower man. God gives us bumps in the road to wake us up. 
So sometimes we get sick, sometimes we get hurt, something like that. I'm not saying God's awful or sin, he's not, but brother, God Almighty knows how to chastise the people getting close to him. So I want to be transformed. Keep that in your mind. I want to be so much that my dear Judy can say, you know, Zach is growing. That's the real test right there. She's the one that lives with me. Y'all be praying for her. She's the one that lives with me. But I need to listen, and you need to do the same thing. You're home. My friend, listen, those disciples were willing to die for Jesus Christ. Those men who had been in intimate contact with him for three and a half years, they knew him inside and out. They knew him privately and publicly. They were willing to die for him. We don't need to live in such a way in our homes, my friend, that my, my wife said, yeah, Zachy is growing. That's what I want to do anyway. Be transformed. Renew your mind. And then renew your mind. Here again, every word is important. You renew your mind by the word of God. You've got me in God's word. How your Bible reading habits been this week? How is your memorizing you've been doing this week? Somebody mentioned that even. We get to be in God's word. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay, I hate to leave Romans 12. I hope I gave you some things you can think about. My next scripture is going to be in 1 Timothy 4.15. He's talking primarily about preachers, but not exclusively about preachers. Now, some of these will be short, some will be long. What's my topic again? Biblical helps to spiritual growth. That's what I want. So I've given you one from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Paul talking to Timothy, his young preacher, protege. Meditate upon these, th meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thou profiting may appear to all. Or you're meditating on this thing, to, and then he goes out to say, take heed to thyself to the doctrine, continue in them, and doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now look at it, folks. Meditate upon these things. What does the word meditate mean? It means to ponder, think deeply, consider. A lot of good adjectives can be given. Synonyms, I mean, can be given. Are you doing that? He said, now, this is especially for preachers, but it's for everybody, really. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Now, I'm glad Greg Chapel has, has turned our hands loose that I don't have to work secular work. Thank God for that. I thank you for it. We can give ourselves to the Word of God. Some men can't do it. They've got to do the best they can. And they're great men. Meditate, but I want you to meditate on these things. Don't just give the Bible a lick and a promise. Meditate, give thyself hold to them. The why? The property may appear to all. If you see me grow, it's going to encourage you. If I see you grow, it's going to encourage me. You can't, you can't, you all, sometimes you ought to hear Judy and me talk. I'll be thrilled. Hey, Judy, guess what? So and so's growing. And we just grin like a mule eating briars. Man, we're so happy about that. I believe this individual is growing. I believe I see signs of growth. Listen, if we all church members are growing, we'll encourage each other. In your families. My daddy's getting to be a more godly man. My mama's getting to be a more godly woman. Even the kids are getting more godly. And we church members are learning how to serve each other, love each other, not be selfish at all. All kinds of things. We need to be living in such a way, and we will not do it unless we're meditating on the Word of God, giving ourselves holy to it. Then we will, my friend, we, our, our growth will be apparent to each other. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I hope that's good. That's good enough if you come and give you that. If you really get that, it's worth coming to church for, isn't it? Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy to them. Thy property may appear to all. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 3.16, one of my very favorites. Ephesians 3.16. I pray this all the time for myself, and I pray for you sometimes too. This is, you all memorize this one. You need, you need strength. We're all weak by nature. We need internal strength. I'm not talking about physical strength now. That's wonderful, but we need internal strength. We're weak, weaker than we can imagine by nature. So here's a prayer Paul prayed for the Ephesians. Let's pray for each other for ourselves. Ephesians 3, that he would grant you, he prayed for the Ephesians, he'll grant you According to the riches of his glory. Now that's pretty good, isn't it? He got lots of glory, lots of riches, didn't it? So Paul acting for something pretty big here. He will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's what you needed. I need that in the inner man. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, guard your heart with all diligence out of it of the issues of life. You know, if, you, if when somebody really messes up outwardly, does something terrible, that probably didn't happen overnight. What happened was they're getting weaker all the time, didn't even know it. You know, you can get weak, don't even know it. You know that? You remember old Samson? Boy, he was strong, wasn't he? I'd like to see a video of some of the stuff he did. 
I went to been something killing a thousand men that y'all bought a ass. That'd be better than uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, brother, he thought he had it. So he monkeying around with, he's just stupid what he did. So we're stupid too, aren't we, sometimes? He got, Delilah got closer and closer to his secret of his strength. Just the Samson, the, the, the Philistines blew up on these Samson, whoop, and he got closer and closer. And finally, my brother, when his head got shaved, he said, I shall stir up myself at other times. But he couldn't do it. And they put his eyes out. So my friend listened. And even said in one of the, I think in Jeremiah, Ephraim doesn't realize he's getting gray hair. What it means there, he's getting older and doesn't even know it. He's kind of wearing out. Listen, how are you? Are you evaluating yourself? How are you doing spiritually right now? You feel strong or weak? We need to think every now and then, where am I? Sometimes we get so busy. This is where we live in. This is like a treadmill. We can become weak and don't even know it. So what we, let's pray, God, I, according to riches of your glory, I might be strengthened with might by your spirit in the inner man. Pray that prayer for yourself. That's what we need it. Okay, that's enough on that one. This is a great one. Now, this is really one for me, but you can have it too if you like. I'm, I'm, I'm confessing something to you. Uh, by nature, I'm, I'm so disorganized, it's amazing. I used to have a thing in my office, and Judy asked me to take it down. I said, my motto is a, a place for everything, everything all over the place. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm going to spend this afternoon get my office cleaned up so I can get to study on Monday. I don't know why I do that. Every time I turn around, I'm doing the same old stuff. And laying, and so I'm, I, I'm asking God to help me. That may sound funny. It's not really funny, really, because it hinders me from being efficient in serving God. So let, to, here's this verse. I pray this lots of times myself, and I want you to pray it with me, if you will, for me. Psalm 119, verse 133. Psalm 119, verse 133. Order my steps in thy word, let not any iniquity have dominion over me. I won't be able to order my steps according to his word. I want him to do that. I, I'm, I'm not as bad as I used to be, by the way, so I think I'm growing a little bit, but I'm still pretty bad. I want to get better at that. Now, there may be some things in your life that need to be straightened out. What are they? If some of y'all, I'll just go ahead, if some of y'all watching computer games too much, you know, sometimes young men especially get locked in computer games and it takes a lot of time and sometimes money. Are you one of those? Well, think about that. What are you doing hindering you in a practical way? See, we live life where the rubber meets the road. We live life in practical ways. Not just theory. So what's bothering you? You need to pray this prayer. Or order my steps in thy word, Lord. Let not your iniquity have dominion over me. I know you can think right now about that. And maybe may God bring some things to your mind. Lord, I need to continually reevaluate my life. We serve an orderly God. We have an orderly creation, and we ought to live as orderly as we possibly can. We had a young man one time uh, at Great Chapel. I don't think I'll call his name. I've called his name before. I don't think I will. Uh, I always loved him to death. Uh, but he lived a dis totally disorderly life. He never got up on time, even in the summertime when he didn't have to go to school. Lay around all day, goof around, just kind of, just so casual. He life went up in chaos, in absolute chaos. I don't know where he is today. Uh, he finally got smoking pot, got messed up. But, the, the, but what I watched him, I watched him deteriorate as his life and not ordered. You know, I heard a, a, a Navy admiral not long ago speak. Man, he looked good, too. He had a uniform on, all his medals and stuff. He looked, he looked sharp. He had a good-looking old guy. Real, and so he would give a lecture down in Annapolis. And he, and he talked to these midshipmen. He said, listen, the first thing you do every morning you get up is make that bed up. He, I mean that. He said, it's real important to make that bed up. So am I accepting on anybody's feet? I don't have to on my feet. I used to not do it, but I'm doing good now. Yes, Judy. I'm getting pretty good at that. And I'll tell you what, you can, you can make it not too boring either. You can pray or memorize while you're doing that. And time yourself. I got out of three and a half minutes now. <laughs> but the point is, I like to let the thing lay there. All foot, this old bed looks old bed. It's going to take forever to fix this up. But see, all kinds of things like that are practical. They're practical. What about eating habits? Are we a glutton? Are we getting out of control? Friends, we live in sinful nature. We need to constantly, and, the, and the, one of the fruits of the Holy Ghost is, 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 is a, uh, oh, what's the word, Addy? Come on, for self-control. Temperance, temperance, that's it, temperance. So, see, I'm, I'm talking about real stuff. We live in a real world. And, you know, we, sometimes a little bitty things sink the ship. A bunch of little holes will sink the ship. We need to evaluate our lives and live as best as we probably can. So that verse again, over in Psalm 119, 133, 
Order my steps in thy word, let not iniquity have dominion over me. Now, another one for me. I mean, this is one of my, I've prayed this a thousand times, or more than that. One of my, I, you know, I confess my sin to you sometimes. I need, you need to know where I'm at. Uh, I love you, and, but I'm a man like you are. I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a sinner, and preachers are sinners. So this one, one of my besetting sins, you may not believe this, is being a coward. I made some brave stands before, real brave stands. It wasn't me doing it. I'm the biggest coward you've ever seen. I don't like confronting people. I don't like when people don't like me. I got a lot of people don't like me. In fact, I've said this at my funeral. There's going to be a huge crowd there. A big crowd. You wait and see. I'm going to have a few people who are sorry. A few more people who are polite. And I'll have a bottle to make sure I'm dead. <laughs> anyway, though, this verse, really, I'm too serious about this verse. 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That word is cowardice right there. But a power, love, and a sound mind. But let me give you some encouragement. You say, Brother Zach, I'm a coward too. Some of y'all are, some of you are not. But if you're a coward, God will never use me. You know God can use a coward. He did use a coward one time. He used Timothy. I can show you by the Bible. And he gave Timothy this Bible. That's why he's talking to Timothy. Because he knew Timothy had that tendency. But you know what Timothy had? An unfeigned faith. So he was Paul's favorite young preacher. You think, how could that be? Paul was a big, brave man. I mean, he was got all kind of courage, man. He wasn't afraid of anything. And this coward here, he still used him. You better believe he did. You know why? His heart was right with God. If your heart is right with God, you can overcome anything. I don't encourage you. You say, I just don't, I've got a weak personality. Uh, I, I just can't do what other people do. You can too. You may be amazed, brother. Sometimes people who try to go on their own strength, they fail like Peter did, you know. Peter failed when he went in his own strength. But brother, when you're depending on God, even a coward can be used to Almighty God. So I don't encourage you. God not gives us a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Now, I'm going down to James, chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. I need wisdom. I really need a lot of wisdom about a lot of things. I need spiritual wisdom. I need natural. I need all kinds of wisdom. I need to be a right kind of daddy, a granddaddy, husband, associate pastor, all kinds of stuff I need wisdom. I want to make, sometimes decisions are hard to make. I don't know what to do sometimes. I don't know what to do. So there's an encouragement right here. So God gave me this a little late on my prayer fasting. It's James chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men liberally and upbraid us not. I love that. He, gives, he, he doesn't say he gives, he's not stingy. He gives you a bunch of wisdom. And he won't upbraid you. He won't say, well, you should have come to me for earlier. No, he won't say that. So he's easy to come to. Sometimes we're not easy to come to. Somebody says, I told you so. Or somebody should have come to me sooner. He, he doesn't operate that way. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, give it to all men liberally, and I bet not. But let's keep going. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavereth is like a wind of the sea, riddled with the wind and toss. Let not that man think he ever see anything of the Lord. A double minded man is up there all his ways. Get in there and say, God, I want to really believe this. I know you won't give me wisdom. You said you would. You may take you a little bit to work that up there, but God can work that faith up. Don't say, well, oh, he, I, I asked for wisdom, but I don't really mean it. He ain't going to give me any. Don't talk that way. If you are that way at first, work through that. Get that. Say, God, help me to have strength to really pray like I'll be praying. Help me to pray the prayer of faith, Lord. See, let me, let's quote that again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of, all, ask of God. Give it to all men liberally, and I pray it's not. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, Driven with the wind and toss, let not that man think he, or she shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is not saying, Robert, don't be double minded. See, God, need, go get it again. If he doesn't give it to you first, go to him again. Don't quit. Don't quit. Do it again. Lord, I prayed. I still want what to do. Keep on praying. In his own good time, he'll show you what to do. I love Stephen Boyd, the pastor up at uh, Mount Carmel in uh, Baltimore. And he told me, he said, Brother Zach, and he's been a great pastor, by the way. He's been a great pastor. Brother Zach, sometimes I have problems at church. I don't have a clue what to do. I don't know what to do. So I just pray, and somehow God works it out. And my friend, God can even work things out sometimes. We think we got the solution. Sometimes we do. Sometimes God works it out for us. I've seen God do that. I've seen, just, God, I need some wind, I need some help. He'll either, do, he'll either show you what to do, or he'll do it for you, brother. We got a great God. We can trust our God. All right. Now, I've got uh, two more to go. I'll be through. One of these, they're all magnificent. To me, they're magnificent. They help me. I hope they help you. Look over in Proverbs 
Chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. You know this one very well. I know you do. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You know, you've heard me say a lot of times, lots of times, great job. I probably said this more than anything else I've ever said. This is probably one phrase I've probably said more than anything else in my ministry. God never said, understand me. God said, trust me. There's a lot in the Bible about trusting God. I want to how to trust him more. There's a lot of things that happen in your life. You don't know why they happened. I've got the disease. Uh, there's been a death in the family. All kinds of things will happen. We're going to have man that's born a woman in a few days of full of trouble. That's all the way it is. So sometimes things bewilder us. They bewilder us. Lord, why did that happen? So my friend, what the devil would like to do is get you where you don't trust God. So, I, so let's say, God, I don't understand. I'm grieving. I'm brokenhearted. I don't understand, but I don't want to trust you. I, 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 right now, I do trust God. I've always trusted God, but I'm not bragging about that. If God took his hand away, I would not trust God probably. I'll pray, God, please, that's my prayer. Let me trust you till I die. Maybe, let me trust you in every circumstance. No matter what happens. My friend, we may be facing some hard times in this old world. Our society is getting increasingly away from God. But let's trust God. So he says this in Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to our own understanding. He doesn't mean don't use your mind, but don't make a God out of your mind. Trust God, my friend. We can't trust. Something, you know, I, I hear a lot of lectures sometimes. I like to listen to lectures. I like to listen to smart people. And there are a lot of smart people out there. Jordan Peterson, he's real smart. Uh, old, uh, what's that old you, you, you name? Anyway, some other guys. I listen to a lot of guys. And, they, and I listen to men who talk, talk, to talk about the world situation. Old, uh, well, I can't tell all the guys' names. But listen. But what always gets me is it leaves me kind of cold. They never bring God in the situation. They're not as smart as they think they are. These guys, they're, they're futurists. They think about their future. They can make these predictions. They know what they're talking about. It's good to be smart and think. They're smarter than I am. But brother, I don't want to trust God, not my own understanding. If I had an IQ 10 times what it is, I still can't trust my own understanding, and you can't either. You have to trust God. He's running this show. God's running this show. He knows what he's doing. He got all under control. So I want to be submissive to him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to our understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him. Let's do that. Let's acknowledge him in all thy ways, brothers and sisters. It will be harder to do that. It can be harder and harder to stand up for God in the society we live in. What the liberal are trying to do, I'm not just liberal, what the ungodly are trying to do, they're trying to say, okay, you can have church, all right. We don't, you can serve your God. But you can do it in the confines of that building. You don't get out in this public square. You keep your mouth shut. We're going to arrest you. They just passed a law in Scotland of all places. It used to be a godly place. A preacher can easily get in trouble, big trouble, for even preaching the Bible. That's the truth. Even though one godly woman like J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter lady, she's challenging them. She said, won't you arrest me? I'm glad she's doing that. But anyway, the point I'm making is, we got to acknowledge him in all of our ways. Don't ever be ashamed of the Lord. Don't ever be ashamed of the Man to man, a woman to woman, that's it. That no, no, nothing has to be said. And other things that are right and wrong. Trust the Lord with all thy heart. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Young people, you got your life ahead of you. Ask God for leadership and guidance in every step. An old 82, almost 83 year old man, I can look back and say God had got me out of so many jams. I've made so many mistakes. He got me out of them. Thank God for it. He's a good God. You can trust him, but put him first. I'll beg you to do that. The Bible, was he not blowing smoke when he said in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything will be added to you that you really need. Okay, now my last text. My last text is over in Hebrews chapter. Now God gave me this for myself. I hope you can get some out of them too. I hope you glean a little bit of something. These are helps to draw close to God. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing ye also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, he's talking about those people in Hebrews 11. And you know, I'm glad he said that, aren't you? Because we get to think sometimes we're like we're the long ranger. The devil wants to isolate you and me. You're not isolated. There's nothing that you've gone through that a bunch of human beings have not gone through before and overcome. That's right. Before I keep reading, I want to quote you 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. You get that? 
No testing has taken you with such a common demand. But a God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Will with the temptation also make a way to escape. You may be able to bear it. So you're not the long ranger. Don't let the devil isolate you. And reach out to other people. And, 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 and God and account, must have account for their safety. You're not by yourself. I'm glad we have individuals in Hebrews 11 who went through some tough times and came out because they pleased God they had faith and you got faith too if you're born again. Wherefore, seeing we also are compacted back with great, so great cloud of witnesses, let us side every way. John prayed this this morning and this made me hit in the heart I'm going to preach about. So I said, thank you, Lord. That's an indication I'm probably on the right track. What's, this is something that's not necessarily a maybe known sin. What's hindering you? Say, well, I've already confessed what to you. What am I always doing being so disorganized? That's a weight, a real weight. Sometimes I get out of control of my eating and I gain too much and I don't feel good. I don't have the energy. That's a weight. That's a weight. That's just some examples. Less that, less that every weight. And the sin which will easily beset you. See, without besetting sins, some things that wouldn't even bother me bother you and vice versa. So you know what really bothering you. Take an inventory. Let's lay aside every way the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. That word patience means endurance. We're in this for the long haul. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. It's not a sprint. This is a lifetime race. You won't be able to quit this race till you cross the finish line. So get ready for it. Let's get that mindset. We're in this, my friend, for the long haul. He puts his head in the plow, looks back, Christ said, not fit the kingdom of God. We're in this, if you make a commitment to serve God, you can't take that back. Now if, you, if you marry somebody, make the, don't, you can't take that back. You, you promise till death do you part. you got to make it. You're a church member. You made vows to God in the church covenant. you just, you got to fulfill those vows. You're in the long haul. Running a race is always fun. That's, we need the second win and third win sometimes. We think we can't make it sometimes. Then we will make it by God's grace. He'll give us added strength. Wherefore, seeing we also are compacted about with so great a kind of witnesses, let's lay aside every weight, the sin which is so even set us, let's run with patience, the race that is set before us. Now, here's the key. Here's how we do it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despite his shame, is set down at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ is at the finish line. What kept Christ going? It's going to keep you going. The joy set before him. His joy was the complete salvation of all his children. What's your joy? You're going to heaven. You're a stranger and a pilgrim. That's the, isn't that the bottom line? My friend, that's what keeps us going. I'm heading for heaven. I'm a pilgrim. This, is, I'm, this world that I increasingly dislike is not my home. It's not yours either. I want you to enjoy it. God has given us richly all things to enjoy. We're going to live a morbid life, but we ought to live a joyful life as much as we possibly can. Even in marriage, rejoice with the wife of thy youth. All kinds of things about rejoicing. So enjoy that. But brother, what keeps me going is I'm heading for glory on these days. Okay, I hope I've helped you some. May God bless you. These are things that help us, I hope, go closer to our great God. Okay, we will stand and sing a hymn. We'll sing number 263. Let me just say this as you stand, that um, there was a very stirring time in the uh, time when Nehemiah led the rebuilding effort of the wall of Jerusalem. And when that was complete, there was, um, there was just this time of renewal as the Word of God was read uh, aloud to the people, Ezra stood and read the word of God. So they were hearing the law of God being read to them, and and the law of God was 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 just reminding them again of who God was, and and um, it stirred them so deeply that many began to weep, and and just mourn. And Nehemiah said, "Don't don't weep. This is the law of God. This is God is speaking to us. Let's rejoice that God is speaking. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. So it was a really stirring time. They were moved. They were." Um, they were, um, you know, d determined um, to, to make a change. And then they said what we often hear. They said something like, Lord, we're going we're gonna to obey you. We're going to obey your commands. We're going to obey your law. 
Um, just a very general statement. But then what happened next is so key. Now listen to this. You may have been stirred this morning. I want to grow. Maybe just the, maybe just, maybe just the, the scene today. So a scene of a brother Zach turns 83 on April the 18th. So this month turned 83. So a scene of someone at 83 saying, I want to change. I want to grow. Maybe that is, hopefully that, just that scene is, is, uh, is moving to you, is inspiring to you. But the point of it is this, is that you can't just leave it in generalities. Um, so what happened after they heard the law, and they said, we're going to obey you, Lord. They started to say some specific things they were going to do. They made some specific commitments. We're going to not do this, and we're going to try to start doing this. So let me just say that you, I hope your soul is stirred. If it's not, you need to spend some time in prayer this afternoon for your soul not being stirred. You need to be serious about changing about growth if you're a child of God. Because the reality is this. 1 John 3 says that everybody that has this hope in them changes. Everybody does. So if you're not changing, it may be indicative that there's not the hope that is set before you that is a reality in your heart. Okay? So... If you're not stirred, you need to pray. You need to seek Christ. He is, he is uh, the one who is able to stir your heart. But if you are stirred, I am exhorting you, do not leave this in generalities. Go do something specific. Make some specific commitments today. Say them aloud. And then, by God's grace, with His great help, He will help you do that. Let's stand. We're already standing. Let's sing number 263. 263, I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice.
sin, Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, just a few announcements. Give me your attention just for a couple more minutes. Number one, just um, thankful for the visitors that are here with us. This is first Sunday of the month, so we always have a fellowship meal afterwards. And so you sure are invited to stay and eat with us, fellowship with fellowship together and enjoy this meal together. So we'll have that here in a few minutes. We'll announce um, time to ask the blessing and, and have the meal together. All right, so it's a little crowded today, um, and we're missing quite a few people. So this is, this, is, uh, this is a blessing. We had the pre-construction meeting on Friday for our new sanctuary, and the meeting went very well. Um, it, it's, the, the contractors just, I thought, meshed very well together and respected one another and asked great questions and gave great answers. And so I'm really uh, thankful that we're getting off on the right foot. Um, that's not your question. Your question is when. <laughs> so um, I don't know the answer to that for sure. But if things go well, then it's likely that we will be breaking ground around the end of May, 1st of June, which would be really exciting, okay? So be praying to that end. That's what it looks like. Um, we're now down to the home stretch on breaking ground and doing that. So praise the Lord for that. Keep praying. Um, this project will be going for a, a good long while. There'll be lots of adjustments, but please do keep praying as we move through that. But it was a great meeting, and again, looking at early summer to uh, late spring, early summer to break ground. That'll be fun, won't it? So, here's another date. The first Sunday of May is May the 5th. First Sunday of May. We have a special service that day. We will meet um, because we will meet at 8.30 for our service that day. We will meet outside, so we'll bring lawn chairs. And the purpose of that meeting is twofold. Number one, we will... Um, we will acknowledge and give thanks to the Lord for His goodness to us when we had to meet outside for months in 2020 um, during the whole COVID thing. And so we're going to just remember the Lord's goodness. We're going to say that back to the Lord, and we're going to sing and rejoice together over that. When we finish that, we will then move to the site for the new sanctuary, and there will be some um, those little construction marker flags and there will be some Sharpies. So be thinking about this, and you will um, write down your prayer for the future, okay? And we'll stick those flags in the ground, and we as a congregation will pray a prayer over the, uh, the breaking ground in the beginning of this, of this new thing. So be thinking about what prayer that you want to write down and stick there in the ground, and those flags will stay there until the ground is moved, okay? So that's going to be a great day on both ways. Looking back and then looking forward, uh, we're looking to the one who is, who is good and kind and faithful to us and has proven that through many generations. All right, a few more dates. I said the wrong date Wednesday night. I'll be with a small crowd, so it didn't do too much damage. Uh, there, there's going to be a tool storm for Carson. The right date was sent in the email that Susan, Susan sent. It is April 16th, um, and there's an address there. That's the address of Carson's best man, John David Moore. Um, so that's the Tuesday the 16th of April, the tool storm for Carson, and uh, we look forward to that. The church we're praying for is Radnor Church in Nashville, the Pastor Shannon Whip. Um, and um, then uh, we have the father and older siblings, I think, of older, the oldest sibling of Bonnie Clementine Hamilton, born on Friday. So we praise the Lord for that. And a little girl in the Hamilton family, again, we're thrilled for y'all. And I'm sure there's the beginnings of a list for taking food. Um, and what food do you take to a chef? I don't know. Um, uh, so I'll be praying for you, for you ladies as you labor over that. Maybe Chef Boyardee is the best thing. <laughs> he says whatever. All right. Um, the last thing I have is, is Sister Judy will be leaving tomorrow. Uh, she's going to Spain for a couple of weeks, so be praying for her 
and her travels. And then the week after that, Brother Zach will leave for Nicaragua. We'll be praying for them as they're on different parts of the, uh, of, of the, of the, of the, uh, the globe. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Sister Who? Priscilla. Priscilla. Okay. okay. So 1 p.m. this Tuesday, ladies' prayer meeting at Sister Priscilla's house. Ty. Uh, Sister Sarah, my wife Sarah, uh, she'll be starting a new job tomorrow. So it's a huge answer of prayers. Uh, just over her five or six years at FedEx will be coming to an end. She'll be starting a ticket master tomorrow. So um, just for the record, I don't know what kind of discounts or <laughs> tickets yet, but we'll try to keep posted. Counting on it. And then be in prayer also. Sister Laurie has a visit with the surgeon. Is that tomorrow or Tuesday? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So let's be in prayer for Sister Laurie. As this journey begins, she'll see the surgeon tomorrow. And let's just really be wrapping her up in prayer over this next week as those, uh, those plans are being talked about and figuring out how to move forward. Daniel? There was a uh, minister I heard on the internet who suggested that tomorrow through the 10th, might be a good uh, few days to fast and pray for our nation. Uh, of course, it never hurts. But anyway, um, there are many, many reasons, but that's what he recommends. Okay, thank you very much. Also, pray for my brothers. Mm -hmm. um, Donald, I don't know anything yet. More chemo. Uh, Gordon, he will have a heart valve replacement, supposedly, in a few days' time, and he'll be in hospital for a while. Okay. This is, uh, Daniel's brothers, Gordon and Donald, both having some health problems. Gordon will be having a heart valve replacement soon. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and dismissal, if you'll bow with me. Father, we thank you for the, uh, the, the reality that your grace is so strong that um, you are still in the, in the work of changing people even all through the days of their life. And so, Father, thank you for your great grace, your transforming grace. And may we um, believe it and by faith reach out to you for help in our great need. In Jesus' name, amen.